For those who haven't watched an episode of Game vs. Real before, and this is actually the third one that I've done in Gran Turismo 7, with plenty more still to come, the premise is super simple. We take a car within the game's roster, on this occasion an Aston Martin V8 Vantage, and compare it one-to-one -one with my time in the real world in either that same car, or at the very least a very close approximation to it. So on this occasion, for example, I drove a 2014 V8 Vantage, and it was the open-top version, which was incidentally the last of these Vantage designs before they got completely changed to that newer, more bulldog shape. This was a very interesting one for me, because so far, even though I've only done three of these episodes in GT7, the Maserati Gran Turismo, the BMW M2, and now this Aston, every single one of those three has been wildly different, as crazy as it sounds, because the Maserati, I guess, spoiler alert, was not a very good representation in the game, for a number of reasons, and you can check out that episode if you're curious as to why, but then we had the Beamer, the M2 competition, which I did right after it was added to the game, and that was a fantastic representation. Almost, well, spot on, I would say. Right there in the middle of the line, they did a really good job. The curious thing is, though, that with this Aston, we've now swung the other way, because this one actually feels better <laughs> in the game than it does in real life. And this is a very weird situation for me, because for those who have driven an Aston Martin V8 Vantage in real life, and there may well be one or two of you, it is after all the kind of car that you can quite easily find, like a, a supercar driving experience at Silverstone or whatever, that kind of vehicle pops up. So I would be curious to know if any disagree with me, maybe even if we have an owner in here, but from my time at least in a couple of Astons, the first couple of Astons that I ever reviewed, in fact, in real life, in Beards and Cars, I was really underwhelmed, to be honest. This was the first Aston I ever drove, and then the one after this was a 2005 Vanquish S, both of which you'd expect to be amazing. This was a 50 grand car, the Vanquish was a 100 grand car, used, and yeah, I just... I just felt kind of empty after driving them. Sure, they looked incredible, sounded incredible, they had the kind of value and prestige that you'd expect, but they didn't really have much personality for me. They felt almost pretentious, in a weird, almost Ferrari kind of way, or at least what you'd expect from a Ferrari, but without as much charisma as I would hope for. In the game, it actually swings completely the other way, because this car is super fun and super charismatic. Now, again, of course there is only so hard you can push a real car on a real road legally, but still, you can get a very good gauge even from a brief drive, and this is why I'm asking for owners' opinions as well, you can get more, more than a clear inclination of what a car's personality is very quickly. And even after the hours that I spent in the car, it just doesn't feel in real life like it does in the game. In a good way when it comes to Gran Turismo, strangely enough. Because like I said, I think the game has done a favour, <laughs> almost, to Aston Martin in featuring this car and making it so good. And I do wonder, perhaps is that something to do with how predominant of a role this car plays in the game, because unlike the Maserati Gran Turismo, unlike the BMW M2, and to be honest, unlike many of the other cars that I'm going to be talking about in future episodes, this is a key player in the Gran Turismo motorsport side of the, you know, eSports, FIA kind of stuff in both GT Sport and GT7. It's a very dominantly featured car because they have the road car, the Group 4 and the Group 3, and of course those are big players. So I'm curious, has that maybe had a push there, or is it maybe something that Kaz or whoever, you know, oversaw the physics of the car genuinely felt? Regardless of the reason, it is a very curious outcome in terms of comparing it to real life. It's done Aston Martin a major favour, at least in my opinion, but I'm open to criticism, so, you know, if you do disagree, maybe if you have driven one, and certainly if you've owned one, or if you've track dated one, you're in a perfect position as well to speak on this matter. So, yeah, tell me down below if you do disagree, but ultimately, it's an interesting turnout on this video, because the Maserati, not so great, BMW, spot on, and then this one, like I said, swings the other way. So a very curious result, and although I'm not sure which episode I'm going to pick next, it will be interesting to see where the pendulum falls. So ultimately, that's it for my thoughts on the Aston in Gran Turismo 7, but for now, as always, thanks for watching.